Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Willow Hill worship service. My name is Sophie and this week our youth are leading our service. I'd like to invite you to fill out the online connection card. You can find the link in the description of this video. We'd love to engage with you, so feel free to like, comment, and share this service. Let's get into our time of worship. We gather today as your people, God. We pray that in your spirit we, find, we will find rest and renewal. We offer this time of worship to you, O oh God.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we love to praise you because you are so good to us. We are excited to be here as one big church family this morning to worship you. Be with us during this time. God, we thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Please forgive us of our sins. Even though we mess up, we know you can come to, we can come to you for forgiveness. Help us to be better Christians each and every day. Help us to reach out to those who need help. Help us to be good friends to others. Help us to share your love in the world. We want to always follow you and to follow your path for us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today we are going to talk about how small things are important. If you have one Lego piece, it's not that exciting, but then you could build it up and add more things and get a cool creation. Another example is you could have a bucket of water and each little drop of water you have would fill it up and fill the bucket. Another example I have is a seed. You could plant it in the ground and someday it could grow up to be a big tree. So little things can add up and be important and change things. A British author, J.R.R. Tolkien, says even the smallest person can change the course of the future. We are small, but God loves us and we are important to him. Even if we are small, we are equal and important. We might even change someone's life, the future, or the world. Let's say our sentence prayer. Dear Lord, please help us remember that even if we are small, we are important and loved. That even if we are small, we could do great good deeds. Amen. At Willow Hill, our youth ministry is helping youth find community and grow their faith. Our youth program wouldn't exist without the generosity of our faithful givers. Your gifts make the youth, our youth program our youth program a reality. Thank you for helping to make a difference in the, in the lives of our youth. We, in, we invite you to give online at the link in the description of this video, or you can send a check and to the Willow Hill office.
My name is Kyler, and I'm a cheerleader at middle school. When I was thinking about Jesus and stories I could talk about today, someone suggested, and that someone being the amazing Miss Gina, using my school cheerleading experience to talk about Jesus, calling the disciples to help him spread the news about God and to help other people learn how to build others up with God's love and share all of the amazing things he can do for us to as many people as he possibly could. Jesus didn't try to spread the news and teach others all by himself. He called a group of people to learn together that, and then worked with them to encourage others to follow them too. They easily followed his lead and they looked up to him. <clears throat> Matthew 4, 18, 22 says, As Jesus walked alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea. Because they were fishermen, come, follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to, how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him, continuing on. And he saw another set of brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brothers, John. They were on a boat with Zebedee and their brother, repairing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. Maybe Jesus called together a group so they could share God's message more effectively and get more people to follow them in living the way Jesus showed us. And so many more people could feel the positive effects of God's unconditional love. We do that too in cheerleading. One cheerleader by themselves probably wouldn't be able to get the crowd's attention or get people in the crowd to follow them. We have a team of cheerleaders who learn cheers and routines together so that we can cheer on the players and lead the crowd in cheering them on too. As my coach says, there is not one person in the stunt group that is more important than another. The stunt cannot go up without two backspot or two bases, a backspot, and then off, a flyer. With a group of us, we can be more interesting and draw people's attention. Joining our voices, voices together makes us louder so we can serve our purpose more effectively. One of our main purposes of cheerleading is to encourage the players so they can play their best and enjoy the game, and to encourage others to improve and learn new tricks. To do that, we need to lead the crowd in positive cheers that will build up the players and coaches instead of saying negative things that will tear them down and make them feel worse about themselves. The same rules apply when at practice when trying new stunts and skills. This reminds me of another verse in the Bible that reminds us how Jesus wants us to live and treat others. One this Thessalonians 5.11 says, So continue encouraging each other and building each other up, just like you are doing. The next time I'm cheering at a game, I hope I can work with my team to encourage the crowd to join us in sharing positive words that, we built, that will build up the players. Then maybe all of us can leave the game no, doing the same thing in our daily lives, working together to build each other with God's love, God's purpose is to lift us up and always support us no matter what, just as we do as our own team. My mom asked me what my favorite Bible story was, and after thinking about it, I said the story with the five loaves and two fish. My mom then asked me why that was my favorite story, and my response was because it was about food. When she asked me, what, when she asked me that, it got me thinking about the story, so I thought I would share it with you. John 6, 5 says, When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, we sh Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his dis disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in the place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over from those who had eaten. Jesus took two small loaves of bread and two fish and fed it to about 5,000 people, not including women and children. So there were probably around 10,000 people that were fed. Looking at this story, it seems impossible. 
It's hard to understand how the food is passed out and how everyone had enough to eat. In the beginning of the story, there was about one basket of food, but at the end, 10,000 people had eaten until they were full and there were 12 baskets left. God took some little fish and loaves of bread and was able to create something so much better. God does this many times in the Bible, and he still does it with every one of us. God can take who we are and form us into something better. In the scripture, it also talks about how the boy was willing to give up the lunch that he had brought. This was a very generous act because he thought that he wouldn't ha even have any lunch in the first place, and he was fine with it if it meant that others would be able to eat. In the end, he ended up with more food than he had given up. This teaches us to be generous and, gives, and give up things even when we may not want to. Sometimes in life, God takes what little we have to offer and he makes it into something way greater. If we give donations to anything like the church, God can take that little action and turn it into a big gesture towards making a difference in people's lives. When Miss Gina and my mom first tried to convince me to write a message for Youth Sunday, I said that there was no way that I was going to do that, but here I am. This is a good example of how Jesus turned something little into something big. God took the little courage I had and turned it into enough to be doing this right now. And if God can do this in my life, I know God can do it in your life too. Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will discover good. Proverbs 19.8 when asked to speak for this service, my first thought was, eh, what am I going to say? My second thought was that I wanted to talk about something in the Bible that not many people talk about that often. We hear often in the lessons of the Bible about who, who we should love. Love others and love God. Love thy neighbor, love your enemy, love your family, and of course, love God above all else all come to mind. One thing we don't always talk about, though, and I think we don't talk about enough, is self-love. If one looked hard enough and read, read between the lines, one would find that the Bible also says that we should love ourselves, which brings us back to Proverbs 19.8, whoever gets sense loves his own soul. Think about that first line for a minute. A person who has sense, has love for their own soul, has love for themselves. God says that we should love ourselves since we are his creations and we are wonderful, we are beautiful, we are his children. We should love ourselves because he loves us. So remember, as you go about your week, that yes, you should love others very much, and of course, you should love God above all else, but also, you should love yourself, because you are wonderful. About a year ago now, I'm in class, and we start to read a poem. It talks about how Adam and Eve were right to take the apple off the tree. For those who don't know, the first two people were Adam and Eve, and their one instruction was to not ever eat the apple so that they would always have their paradise. Then, one day, the devil in disguise as a snake tricked Eve into eating the apple, which caused them to leave their paradise. That day, we're in class discussing whether this poem is correct or if it's wrong, whether Adam and Eve were right to lose their paradise. And then, we fast forward a couple of days. That Sunday, we're... Uh, we're in church, and I'm listening to the sermon, and it talk, start talking about that same story, the same story of the Garden of Eden, and how it was right or it was wrong. If I'm being honest, I don't remember which one, either my class or we said here, but I can assume that, is that it was wrong. But just talking in class sometimes doesn't give you that effect, like you're zoning out, and I, so I come here, and I'm confused. I still don't know. I'm still thinking about it. But then you come here, and they explain it, and it shows and clears things up. It shows how, how the story was meant to be told. And th it shows that God is always there. God surrounds you. He's listening to you, whether you're sad, happy, confused, angry. 
no matter what, he's there for you, and he always knows. He'll help you out in your times of hardness and when things are easy. So you can always count on him to be there. During the week, I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to talk about with all of you today, and there were several things that crossed my mind. Then I realized that there is a single word that expresses every aspect of what I would put into a testimony, which is joy. Who doesn't love joy? Webster's Dictionary says that joy is a feeling of great pleasure or happiness that comes from success, good fortune, or a sense of well-being. In case you don't understand this kind of joy, I'll give you some examples. At the high school level, I've made it to state every year for cross country, and each time brought me joy. When I take my dad, Ozzy, on a walk and the weather is nice, I feel joy. Knowing that I have family and friends who love me brings me great joy. Joy is contagious, so when I carry it with me, the people around me might just feel a little more joyful too. As great as this joy is, there's a second kind of joy that is even better. This joy is from knowing God. It is that good feeling in your soul as God illuminates the beauty of Christ to you through the word and the world. This kind of joy means that you don't always have to be happy, but means that you know that everything will work out for you in the end. It is all-consuming, exhilarating, and how people fight their everyday battles because they know that the Lord will guide them through. As stated in John 15, 11, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Unlike the first kind of joy, however, the joy that comes from knowing God is much harder to share with the people you encounter if they don't already possess it. I've always been told that Christians are kind, and through kindness we will bring non-believers to God. I agree with this statement, but have also never met a single person in my life, regardless of their beliefs, tell me that kindness is for losers and we should all just be mean. However, over the course of the last few years, I have come to recognize that in order to bring people lasting spiritual joy and share the message of the gospel, you must do more than just show them kindness or read them your favorite Bible verse. On average, 2.7 million people convert to Christianity every year, and this is because of the enormous outreach that is done for all demographics of people. At Willow Hill, I have always known the significance of passing an offering and raising money for different organizations. Since July of last year, though, it has become so much more important to me, and I have a better understanding of how useful our donations are. In July, I went with two of my friends, who are also teenagers at this church, to a Methodist camp at East Bay in Lake Bloomington. The camp we went to is called Babyfold Camp and has annually taken place for five days in the summer since 1979. The camp was not for us teenagers during the day, though, but rather put on by us for children. Most of the children that came to Babyfold Camp did not have a great home life, and we were told in advance that a lot of them had experienced neglect as babies. Because of this, these children had social and emotional disorders, and so they went to a school designed to fit their needs and was in session for several weeks during the summer. There were around 50 kids that came to camp every day with their teachers, and from the time when they would fly off the bus at the start of the day to when they would slowly get on the bus with their melty popsicles, they got to feel like regular kids. Throughout the week, I was partnered with several different kids, and they all told me that Babyful Camp was their favorite week of the whole year. These children that came to camp had the support of our church and others, and they left camp with the joy that comes from knowing God. My faith deepened thanks to Babyfold Camp, and I continue to be joyful. I will leave you with a quote by Henry Nowen. Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. This worship service has ended, but your life in Christ goes on and on. May your peace be so real and your joy so evident that all who see you come to know God. <laughs>